G'day reefers, I'm Cam the Fish Guy. Thanks for watching Gallery Aquatica TV. As you may know, Australia has been experiencing record high temperatures of late and we've been called out to one of our clients that has a problem with the temperature in the tank and we're going to look at the chiller and hopefully install a new chiller on this system that's going to do the job. So let's have a look at the tank and we'll show you what we're going to do with the chiller. Recently this tank has been experiencing temperatures well above 28 degrees Celsius. Now with this tank we really want the temperatures to be more like 24 or 25 degrees. So let's have a look at the chiller which is currently working on this tank and let's see if we can work out why it's not bringing the temperature down. It's just in here. So this is the chiller. It's a Halia 1000 and currently it's turned off because it's being controlled by the apex and at this time of the day, it's early morning, the temperature in the tank is actually where we need it, it's 24 degrees. But every night, this tank is getting really high in temperature and this chiller is trying to bring the temperature down but it's struggling. And the reason why it's unable to bring the temperature down is because of the fact it's in an enclosed cabinet and it's very close to the wall uh, and it just doesn't have enough room to breathe. Chillers put out a heap of hot air and if they're in an enclosed environment, you'll have a problem whereby they can't bring the temperature down because they're basically sucking in their own hot air. So, let's have a look at what we're going to do to replace this chiller. We have a new chiller, a Tico, and it's brand new on the market. It only just came out this week in Australia. So let's check out the new Tico. So this is the new Tico TK2000 and this tank is about 800 litres and the 2000 is rated to tanks much bigger than this so it's going to do the job beautifully. Now one of the interesting things about this chiller and what makes it new on the Australian market is that it uses a new gas and the gas here is the R290. Now this gas makes the chiller a much more power efficient system and is also more environmentally friendly. So we have been waiting a while for these chillers and it's so exciting that we've got them on the market and at Gallery Aquatica we've got absolutely stacks of them. They come in three sizes, there's the TK500, the TK1000 and this one the TK2000. So let's have a look at what we're going to need to install this chiller on the system and uh, we'll run you through some of the advantages of this chiller. So the Halia 1000 takes a thicker hose than the Tico TK2000. So we've got some of the hose for this chiller. We've also got a reducer so we can reduce the, the hosing down. And we've got some zip ties in case we need to tie off the, the hose. We've also got a pair of pliers. Now this is one of the uh, most important things that you can use when you are installing one of these chillers and you'll see why in a minute when we put the hose clamps on. But this is the exciting part. Let's have a look inside the box and we'll check out this TK2000. So these are the fittings. Uh, these are the hose clamps that I was just talking about. Instruction manual. So this is the hood. And this is actually one of the really great things about the Tico. It allows the hot air to be uh, exhausted in a direction that you choose. So we'll look at that more closely in a minute. So now, the chiller. Okay. So given the chilling capacity of these chillers, they're actually a relatively small unit. Their footprint is small, they're not too tall, so they're very compact. So they're a great chiller in that respect. And something that I haven't mentioned yet is that these chillers also heat. 
So we'll be able to take out the heater from this system. So there we go, the first of the new TK2000s, the first one I've ever seen. Uh, you can see it has a dust trap in here that comes off for easy cleaning and it's magnetic so this part's magnetic so it's very easy to put back together. That's a great feature. You can see the exhaust comes up through the top and so with our hood we have the option of putting it on whichever way we choose. And this is another interesting part about the Tico is that you can actually install this into the side of the cabinet so that it will exhaust out of the cabinet. And when we open up the end cupboard, you'll actually see one of these already positioned. So let's have a look at the space that we're gonna put this uh, chiller in. So we were actually here last week when we first heard that this tank was overheating and we spoke to the builders that are responsible for building this house and we've had them install something which is going to make this new Tico absolutely perfect for the job. And as you can see, we have had one of these vents from the Tico installed into the cabinet and so the hot air is going to exhaust through this section. But where the hot air goes, it's quite exciting and let's have a look at that. We have another cupboard in here and so the hot air is going to come up and there's actually a drawer of air with a little exhaust fan which is going to suck the hot air up and out into the outside. Now this cabinet or this cupboard side also allows us great access for our Wavemaker magnets. And what my plan is, I wanna put an MP40 in here because we have the power to it. And this way we'll have a Wavemaker where you won't see any cables. So this little cupboard is absolutely awesome. It looks so good and it's gonna make all the difference with how we exhaust our hot air from the chiller. So now, let's see if the chiller is going to fit into its position. The first thing I'm gonna look at is how I want to orientate the chiller. Because we have the fittings on one corner and we have the temperature readout and the controls to adjust the temperature on this side, it's probably gonna be best if we have it facing this way and our hood facing this way to exhaust up and out. So let's see if it fits in. Okay. So I think this is gonna be a little bit low. We did actually tell the builders to make this uh, 12 mil above the height of the chiller, just so we had a little bit of room to, to play. And we do have a board that we'll probably put underneath the chiller to prop it up a little bit. Okay. So that is the case. Looks like we've got exactly 12 mil. So I'm gonna put the board under the chiller. That is perfect. This is gonna be so good. We've got our chiller, it fits perfectly. Uh, we do need that 12 mil board, which is what we plan to do anyway. Um, and it's gonna exhaust up and out. Now all we have to do is work out how we're going to take out the old chiller and adapt the new chiller to the hoses that is currently running on this system. The first thing I have to do is remove the old chiller from the system and I've just cleared as much space as I possibly can and so I need to unplug the hoses. I've already turned off the flow to the chiller. So 
the issue I'm going to have is that it's difficult to do this without a bit of splash. So I'm just going to put my towel underneath the fittings. And I think the way I'll do it to start off with is I'll actually take off the lock nut because they come off easy. Let's hope it doesn't have too much water come out. So it's kind of inevitable that you're going to have some water come out. I'll just catch it with that. All right. I'll purge that. So this uh, hose is going to come out. We're going to run the 19 mil to the 16 mil to the chiller and then the 16 mil back into the sump. So I'll try and take this out without any spill. This side, this one's going to spill more. The water out of this hose is going to just trickle out. These Haleas are good chillers, but they're just not well suited to this type of setup. This one's difficult to get out. Okay, there we go. So now I can pull this chiller out. It's gonna be nice having more space in this cabinet. You can see that the Tico is almost half the size of the Halia. this hose of water because I don't want it to come off and go everywhere. All right, that's good. So now we have to go from the 19 mil to the reducer to the 16 mil hose to the Tico, then the Tico back into the sump and then we can plug it on and we can see how it works. I've just made some space. Uh, I've moved the RO filter across a little bit so that it's easier to work on our Tico. Um, the first thing I'm gonna do is to install the fittings on the new Tico. So I'll just pull this out of position. The way we have it orientated, we've got our fittings around the back, but there's gonna be heaps of space. So I'm gonna take off these caps. Now, if you look closely at the side next to these taps, you've got an intake and an outlet. And you can see right, it says in and out. And so the water is going to go in through the bottom and come out through the top. So it's important that you get that right. It's also important that with these little caps, they've got spare O-rings, so make sure you don't lose those. And with these valves, they also have the same little seal. So when you're positioning this fitting onto the chiller, it's very important that that seal is in place. So I just typically hold it with pressure, push the seal in all the way like so, so that when I thread it on, there we go, I know that the seal is in place and it's hard up against the threaded fitting. So that's the first one. Oh, this is interesting. The seal has fallen off this one, so I better find it. If I was to connect this without the seal inside, we would certainly have water on the floor. All right. So I think about what angle I want these fittings before I tighten them up properly. And I'm just gonna have them coming out like so. The hose is gonna just run along the back. Um, I may change this if I choose, but I think we'll go like this for now. All right, so nice and tight. This is the most important thing. If these leak, it's very annoying and you often end up with salt creep. So. 
nice and tight. And now I'm going to put the hosing on. So we have our 16 mil hose and the outlet is going to be longer than the intake. I'll do the intake first. So I'm just going to put the hose on and get our hose clamps. So these definitely good to have the multi-grips for. So by squeezing them in the multi-grips, it increases the size of the opening. You can easily get your hose through. And the intake on the bottom, I'll put the hose over. I'll push it all the way down. Just move this back a bit. So before I try and put this hose clamp over it, I wanna make sure that the hose is on as far as it needs to go. And then I'm just gonna position the hose clamp with the pliers at halfway, and that's it. So it's sealed there, it's sealed there. We know there's not gonna be any leaks. Um, and I think I just need to run to here. All right, I'll give myself a little bit of extra length. I can always cut it off. It's always a good idea to have lots of hose when you're doing this sort of job. Make sure I don't cut myself. Okay. And it's going to go to our blue reducer. Better grab that. Whatever it is. And now I'm gonna do the other one. So same process, multi-grips. Nice and tight, I'm gonna put it back into position. thread this through to the sump. There we go. Lots of slack. That's what I want. I'll neaten that up later. But having lots of slack reduces the chance of it coming out when I turn the pump on, but that's good for now. So I'm going to cut this 19 mil hose. Put in our reducer. Now you have to be careful with some of these reducing fittings. There are some on the market that will wear out eventually. Uh, the black poly ones are a bit of a problem like that, but these are good. So. Could use hot water, it would make it easier, but uh, I'll get this on all the way, <sighs> like so. And now, our intake. The dosing is gonna be completely changed. We'll have dosing vessels, so this will uh, change in the future and be a bit neater. My main goal today is we need to fix this heat overheating problem, so just getting the chiller set up is our main goal. But I'll just chuck this on like so. Uh, that's, that's it, that's so tight. There is no way that's coming off. But I'm gonna put a zip tie over it just to be sure. It's not gonna be under huge pressure. 
Uh, these chillers don't need a really high flow through them, but um, I do this mainly for my own peace of mind. You could use a hose clamp and in the future when I change this, I probably will put a, a, like a metal hose clamp on. It's never gonna be exposed to the water, so a metal hose clamp is fine. But just for now, all right. So, theoretically, we should be able to turn the flow back to the chiller and then turn the chiller on. One of the worst things that can happen with a marine aquarium is if a hose comes loose and causes a flood. So the way we put the chiller hose back into the sump is important. And I mentioned before about we have a, a lot of slack and sometimes you can just curl the slack around in the part of the sump and, and it's totally fine. But what I'm gonna do today, just to be doubly sure, is I'm gonna use a candy cane and this will allow me to, so I'll just put our chiller outlet hose on, this will allow me to direct the chiller return down into the skimmer section. I may cut it off a little bit, but one advantage of doing this is it means it will actually stop to, uh, redu it'll reduce the amount of bacterial silt that develops in this section of the, of the sump. Um, and it'll also mean that it's got to go, the water has to go through the sump again, so the chilled water will go through the sump and it should just be a more even way of chilling the system. But primarily, it's so that we can be sure that this can't just come out and fly all over the place, so that will be 100% secure. We're almost finished the installation of our chiller. The last thing we have to do is test it and set it up. So I'm going to turn the flow onto the chiller. And the important thing will be ensuring that there's no leaks. So here we go, here comes the water. And I can hear it bubbling through the chiller. This is when you want to keep a close eye on the fittings around the back here, if it is gonna leak. If it is gonna leak, you'll see a, a very slow drip at the fitting, which will cause salt creep. Uh, the water seems to have gone through. I'm gonna check on the outlet. So I'm just lifting this candy cane to see the flow. Um, it's probably about a thousand liters now, not even. I'll turn it up a little bit. Okay, that's good. Now, let's turn on the chiller. Holding your finger on this bottom right button for five seconds will activate the chiller, turn it on. Now, you can see we've got the set button here. If you hit the set button once, it will tell you what temperature the chiller is set to. So it comes out of the box set to 20 degrees Celsius. So we're going to change that. So to change the setting, you hold your finger on the set button until they start to flash and then you increase the temperature. And we're going to increase the temperature to 25 degrees. All right, and now I'll hit set again. And so we have it set to 25 degrees. This is the temperature of the tank at the moment. And when the temperature gets above 25 degrees, it will then bring it back down. If it happens that the temperature gets below 24 degrees, the tank, the chiller will actually uh, heat it back up again. As we said before, this system chills and heats. So I'm still keeping an eye on any of the possible points of leaking uh, behind the chiller. Also our reducing uh, fitting here, making sure it's nice and dry. 
um, but that's perfect. Uh, we don't have any leaks, so it's pretty good to go. Um, that is pretty much it. Chillo installation done. Now that we have our TK2000 with the R290 gas installed on this system, everything is going to run a lot more smoothly. We won't have the problems that we've previously had with temperature control on this system and we'll have a chiller which is going to be more efficient and importantly much more quiet. So we'll bring you more updates to this tank as we install more componentry on it, as we add more coral and livestock and we'll show you how the chiller is going in the future as well. So I'm Cam the Fish Guy, happy reefing! So that's our video for today. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button, hit the subscribe as well. We'll be putting out videos every week showing a, a new tank with new products. There's gonna be lots in all the videos. I'm Cam the Fish Guy and keep on reefing.